Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Art Assigner Black in again asking you to hit that share button. Thanks to those who've hit share or like or subscribe because the message is more important than the messenger. Um, and so that's why I thank you most if you hit share. Now, now that I've given that time to sink in for you, this message is for um, any aware of black men who ever get asked the question, who hurt you? Now, first off, I'm going to give the context of the question. If you are a red pill aware black man, you don't have to tell people that you are in order for them to ask who hurt you. As we know, people will ask that question without you even so much as um, saying anything about it. You can simply not chase after. And, you know, when you're a black man, the expectations of you chasing the booty are higher. So you could simply decide you're not going to chase the drawers. <clears throat> you're not chasing the ass. You're not chasing the pussy. You're not chasing the titties. You're going to be asked that question. Why don't you? And when you say that uh, you simply got other stuff you got to do, uh, it doesn't make sense. If you chase it, it gets up and runs. If you don't, it may come to you. It may not. Uh, dating's been ruined. At this point, the answer is going to be, I mean, once you don't say that you're gay, then the answer becomes who hurt you. The response to that is not one. It's a menu of them. If you're a black man and you're asked this question, you got a bunch of options. One of them is. Um, it doesn't have to be me. I saw other men get hurt and that's enough for me. The other option is um, it takes more than one person to do something wrong before you start to stereotype the group. The other option is um, who didn't. The other option is if nobody hurt me, it is still not worth it. Y'all hurting a man is, is not necessary for a man to realize that most of you are not worth the pursuit now that's the strongest answer that right there really gets them um, uh, to understand that they're not going to get very far trying to shame you into chasing the draws and elevating the value if not one of you hurts a man in today's time so what it's still not necessary for most of you to not be worth the pursuit it's not a question of hurt it's a question of value is it worth the pursuit if there is nothing I can do short of being rich and tall and famous in order for women to pursue me then why the hell is it that I should pursue a woman that's not rich and tall and famous why not because this is the age of gender equality it's 2020 you got equal rights. You have the right to go after the man you want. Get out there and get him, tiger. I'm sorry, tigress. Go ahead and roar and go get your man. Stop asking us to chase you all down with everything that's going on. With Me Too. That's just one. With, uh... Yeah, just cut that out. Don't ask us to sit up here and, and pursue you in an age of gender equality. You see, when we were coming up, we heard these women with career goals. I want a career in law enforcement and I'm going to get it. I want a career as an attorney and I'm going to get it. I want a career as a physician and I'm going to get it. That's what these women said when we were coming up. I mean, I'm in my 40s now. So, you look back at more than 25 years ago when we were in middle school and high school and that's what they said. They didn't say I want to be a wife and a mom and that's okay. But they had these careers. I want to be a teacher. I'm going to be a teacher. Great. Some of them had no better plans than to say I want to be rich and I'm going to be rich. Great. And we all say that. We all say I'm going to get rich. Okay. Now that we've all said, I want to be rich. 
um, what are you going to do to get there? And a lot of kids, male and female alike, made that mistake. But as what happened is that as we grew older, we men came to realize how unlikely it is for anyone to get rich. And nobody sat up and explained to these women that it was very unlikely. And they grew up with these with this mindset that they were going to get rich. And if they don't get rich one way, they're going to get rich another way. Now, Jeff Bezos' wife, his ex-wife, I understand. She helped him build that. And he cheated on her. With the neighbor. I got it. I, I get that. So I understand why she took half. She did help him build it up from the ground. She backed him up and he repaid it by cheating on him with somebody else's wife. I understand that to be the case. But in many cases, it's not necessarily that way. I mean, you got false abuse accusations because a lot of lawyers for ex-wives that are seeking divorce will say this is a good way to get the most money. Um, you want to make him uh, you want to give him difficulties paying for the fees he's going to need a lawyer you want to make it difficult for him to pay lawyers fees so what you do is you uh, get him removed from the house with a restraining order with these uh, um, accusations and allegations he can't go to the house he has to find another place to stay he may still have to keep everything on in the house all the electricity and bills and everything else and pay an attorney you bankrupt him So this is the end result of these men making approaches. And this is all really you got to say to these ladies. You have gone after everything else in life you have wanted. There is no reason for us to turn around and start making approaches to you. And even if you're not the type to go after everything in life you wanted, there is a high probability that even the woman that doesn't do that and therefore has some ground to say that she should be pursued would still listen to other women who would tell her, uh, well, you need to stay until you're, you qualify for alimony. And then you take him for it. And you can spend that money on some young guy who can keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. The irony of it is that the men who have to wind up paying this were never at some point in their life that young guy that got paid to just keep on going and keep on going and keep on going and dig out a milf and not have to worry about much else. So, in a nutshell, the response is that you're telling them, I know your nature and I know what you're hiding. Whether it's the nature or the socialization, whatever the case is, it doesn't make a difference. The fact is that this is something that they understand is in them and they're hiding this. Those are the ones that are going to come and ask you why you're not out there making the pursuits. They're the ones who are going to say who hurt you in the first place because it's in their best interest to be able to go after whatever career they want in life and still sit back and wait to be pursued by guys so that they can turn around and then say, well, you came after me and look what you turned out to not be. I'm unhappy and let's go see this divorce judge. So, um, really in a nutshell, the fact that they're not going after the ones uh, that they want, even that's actually a trick. And the funny thing is that when it comes down to non-commitments, when it comes down to uh, just um, validation they do actually go after certain guys they want you pursue them they turn around and pursue someone else now maybe if no one pursues them they don't have the confidence to go and pursue who they want but you pursue them they turn around and they pursue somebody else that's really what that comes down to a lot of times they want you to pursue them but they don't want you and you have to see through that game A lot of you older guys, you already know this. When you think about it, you sit down, you already know this. But I'm going to say this. If you a barber, school these young cats that come in to get get tapered up. Let them know. If you a truck driver and you training these young truckers, school them on that too. If you're, um, hell, if you're a physician, and you're treating some of these young cats 
to come in for certain things. School them on it. Tell your nephews, if you got sons, school them too. See, my son, he's schooling his homeboys, homeboys on it. I started to school him. I gave, dropped a few nuggets on him when he was young. Boy, look, now he's up here schooling his homies and his partners. And he told me his circle of friends, although they get bird brain ideas and a lot of times they may be immature about a lot of stuff, he said, there's one thing they understand, that you sidestep. That's it. And many of them were into things like comic books. But as they got older, they realized that keeping up that appearance would make women overlook them so that the women wouldn't even try to distract them, at least not now while they're young and, and the women are young. And they said this is their tactic for one reason. They made an agreement. They're going to uh, work on their money. That's it. And when they stack enough, they're going to look for property abroad. A group of friends, young cats, just turned 18, has already set up and decided collectively that they are going to abandon the Western woman. And they're all going to tell somebody younger than them the same thing. We couldn't stop this if we wanted to. I mean, we ourselves could not stop the spread of this if we wanted to. I hope that one day the things I've said won't have to be true anymore. Till then, I hope they've been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum. Black horse sign of blackout.